I am Bill Cartwright with Living Right with Bill Cartwright. And this is the Stress Mastery Podcast, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress mastery. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Stress Mastery Podcast. I am Bill Cartwright and I am here with the super millennial, David Barreto. How you doing, Big Dave? Doing good. I feel like it's been a little while. It's take two on this particular episode. So let's talk about that, people. I know we got a lot of disturbing uh, messages because the podcast was, if you did get the podcast and download it, it was a disaster. It sounded I like a, aliens. It sounded like aliens. I had recorded yesterday in a hotel and I, and I stay, you know, at, at the Hilton's, one of Hilton Honors. And so we have the best Wi-Fi and I didn't realize it and I sent it to... David, I did a solo episode and I listened to it this morning. It was a disaster. So we took the episode down and we're recording this now. And so if you're listening to it, we're going to get it out today. You're listening to it. You're, you're going to put it up right away, right, Dave? Yeah, yeah so put it it'll be up in a few minutes right after. All right. So All right. Ahead. So... So, well, we, I did it solo yesterday, so now we could do it together, which I think this, our episodes are always better a little bit together because of the discussion. And this week, our topic is fear. And today's meeting of the minds, we are discussing overcoming fear through focus and action. So before we get started, quick announcement for Stress Mastery Community. This week, you will get the final episode of module four which is the want of belonging and that will close out that stuff there's five uh lessons in this particular module and that will close this module out and david you'll be announcing when we're going to do the live q a correct yeah that is correct we're gonna go, i was waiting for this uh module to drop um just so everybody gets in there um because i will be posting kind of a, a notification at the bottom of this module uh, within the forum board so uh, for people to ask their questions on the dates and times uh, but also there's going to be a community poll um, to see what everybody thinks we're going to use what we normally do which is a uh, Saturday at 2 30 and um, Eastern Easter time, time. Yeah. Um, and if there is you know overwhelming or you know a large population of the people that want to switch to a different time we'll see if we're able to accommodate with that if not we'll definitely make the changes for the following Q&A Okay, well, hopefully this episode will go through, Dave. So here we go. Are you ready? Yes. This week, our topic has been on fear. And so today we're discussing overcoming fear through focus and action. So fear, and we all understand that fear is an energy of protection. Fear is activated and creates a perception. It creates a story of danger or threat. Now, fear is an energy understand it's an energy and when activated this energy affects the entire physiology including body and mind fear is an energy that causes behavior that can range from attack and aggressiveness to chronic worry and procrastination fear is an energy that each human being carries after age seven that's understood, right? Yeah. You saw me drop my notes? I, I, I heard it clearly. <laughs> I, I'm so awkward. Yeah. I'm so awkward because I have such a system when we're at when we're home. I don't have that system here. So I, my system with all my monitors that I have, it's easy. I just drop my notes. I don't know. You guys, hey, listen, we're going to get you this episode. We're doing a second take to make sure you guys get it. So, so let's get into fear. So we're talking about fears and energy, right? And each human being carries fear because fear is the energy of the comfort zone. So fear actually is the energy that traps us in a world of desire. Uh, the want to change and grow is very strong within the human being. We want to expand. If you look at a child, tell a child, no, we don't want you to walk. They're not going to wait for your permission for they start to grow. So we have this desire within to change and to grow. And what fear does, fear keeps us in this stuck energy that drops us from desire to guilt. And the, then we start to feel bad about not taking actions to change. Mm -hmm. Why aren't we taking actions to change? Because we're caught in fear. Yeah. So that's how fear works. But I, I want to ask you, David, your thoughts. 
can fear be a good thing? Yeah, that's that, that was a big thing that I that I talked about on Monday is fear can be uh, your best friend. It's letting you know that it's time for change or it could be the one that's going to stop you from doing anything different. And that is exactly right. Fear is the energy of the comfort zone. Understand, it creates this emotional response. Not only is this response there to protect us, but also fear has the ability to send us a message that we are actually on the right path. And what would that path be? That would be the path of expanding our life situation, the path of personal growth, and the path of leaving our comfort zone. Fear is telling you you're on the right path. The fear energy can tell us that we are moving towards something, and fear can actually help us to become conscious. Mm -hmm. You agree, yeah, right? Absolutely. So when I have clients, and we're working on their uh, focus, right? When I'm working with a client, coaching client on focus, we have them use the focus, the green focus management system. And they're, at, they're taught on how to work with a timer system um, called a Pomodoro. Now, when they start this, and the reason that we use this system is they actually have a strong fear energy toward certain tasks. Anything that you procrastinate on you're procrastinating because you're stuck in a fear energy. And those tasks that they usually have a fear toward are important. They're really very important tasks. And they're important for their growth and their success. And yet, they know that these tasks are important. They still feel the resistance, which is the fear energy. If you feel resistance, I don't care what the work, the task, the action is. It's important to move through the resistance. In fact, Stephen Pressfield said, the more resistance, the more important the work is. Mm -hmm. So as these clients, as a client follows the system and does the work, they will always relate the same type of story or feedback. Each and every time, they always relate how amazing they felt after they did the task that they were procrastinating on for so long and how they felt their energy was so high and expansive after doing the work. Now, all of us have experienced this process. Do you remember, David, in school when you had a project and they gave you eight weeks to do that project and you started it the day before the due date? I don't know if you've ever done that, but I sure have. I am very guilty. Mom, don't listen to this episode. <laughs> yeah, mom's not listening. <laughs> so, yeah, it's true, right? We uh -huh. wait to the last second. And we're waiting last second. Fear creates resistance, but it also can create focus. So... We wait to this last second to do something, right? But then when you're so scared and you're doing it all nighter, for some reason, you've got all this energy to create focus and get the project done, right? And mm -hmm. if you are practicing the steps of stress mastery, what's happening is you are starting to create awareness. Fear creates resistance, but it can create focus too. And this awareness that you're creating allows you to feel and see the fear instead of reacting the fear. When you see the fear, you have the ability to respond in the fear instead of reacting the fear. So it's kind of when we begin to use fear as an ally, why fight it? When we fight yeah. fear, what happens? It just doesn't do anything, it just it gets, makes it worse. Yep, yeah, get stronger. You cannot fight fear with fear or yeah. force and so when you make fear an ally you will begin to do things that your self-concept has deemed difficult it's your it's your stories telling you this is hard or you don't want to do this it's your stories it's your self-concept it's your ego understand fear is a program but it's also essential to understand that fear's purpose is to keep you within your tribe. And most important, 
fear's purpose is to preserve your identity. That's it. Fear is the protection of the ego. Of the, mm -hmm. That is the comfort zone. So if you say, I am afraid to speak in front of people, I am afraid I will get embarrassed. Well, if you, that will be your behavior. What you will do is you won't speak in front of people. If you say, I'm afraid of traveling to big cities with crime, your behavior will be you won't travel to big cities. You won't see things. You will yeah. never go anywhere. If you say, I'm afraid of taking tests, I'm not smart. Well, your behavior will be driven not to grow, not to learn new things. You've already crippled yourself with a simple belief that I'm not smart. So the list can be endless when we look at this. And, it, and literally, it's all crap. It's just all crap. It's what you believe. And what you believe is not necessarily true. In fact, most times it's not true. You agree? Uh, yeah, I, I found that. And, and that was like when you go back to the thing about school, um, that last minute thing, I was always so worried I wouldn't understand it. You know, and the moment you start getting into it, you realize that it was all in your head. And that's exactly what you're talking about. It's never, almost never as bad as what you think. And then once you complete it, it's always never as bad as you think. Never, never. And so we are studying, our, our book study is by the author Wayne Dyer, the great teacher Wayne Dyer. And he's our featured author um, for our current book study for those that are following the book study. Now he taught that fear is, an acronym for fear that he used to teach on fear was, fear is false evidence appearing real. And that's the truth. False evidence appearing real. There is no true threat for immediate physical danger in most cases. You might encounter that once in your life, twice in your life, depending on your job, of course, because if you're a uh, a first responder, you're a police officer, you're, that's, those are real. That's why I say yeah. those, those are the people that have real stress. Mm -hmm. you know? And so if you look at fear closely, fear steals our focus. Fear steals our consciousness. Fear brings our past to the present. Fear dominates your behavior. And it's, when it's driven, your behavior is driven from the lens of your fears, then you're never progressing on your life's path and you're never connected to your purpose. Mm -hmm. So to become conscious is really all about overcoming fear. So we let go of fear. We actually experience true freedom. Tomorrow I'm going to talk about the pendulum of fear, which is love. But the truth is when we let go of fear, it's the only time we can be free. The one of security is the fear energy. And the main thing we talk on the one of security is the main thing that we want to, we, the one of security drives us to is try not to change anything. We don't want things to change. That's the one of security. And we must come to the conclusion, all of us, that fear is an illusion, that your fear can never truly keep you safe. As Wayne says, False evidence appearing real. Yeah. You agree with all that? Yeah. Like I said, fear is just like, it's, it sucks because it's easier said than done in most cases, right? You know, a lot of times where it was like, just do it, just do it. But it even comes down to a lot of the things like where, um, where real fears, like you said, like police officers and yeah. things like that. There's people like adrenaline junkies who jump off yeah. of bridges and do things. Those are still real fears. Like if you yeah. tell me to jump off a bridge, yeah. I'm going to be scared out of my mind, but there's someone who will do it willingly. And that's just the mind overcoming that fear, even in a real fear sense. So that's how strong our, our, our mind barriers are being. When it comes and it's to one thing to, to do that and face it and be there and you know it. It's another mm -hmm. thing to let fear um, control you. You yeah. know what I mean? So yeah. this is what and it's the difference between reacting and responding in fear. And so the question is this, how do we conquer fear? Well, Seth Godin, he states, anxiety is nothing but repeatedly re-experiencing failure in advance. What a waste, Seth Godin. And he's right, what a waste. Because we're always, we're always experiencing failure before it's ever happened. Mm -hmm. We're always doing that. And you got to ask yourself an honest question. Are you really 
your past failures. Real evidence that justifies fear of future, of future failures, failures. Are you really your past failures? Are you really the, the future failure? You gotta ask yourself the question. You gotta ask those questions because that's consciousness. The truth is past failures generate false evidence appearing real fear. I just love that statement because it really is an illusion. Truth, we can only learn from taking action and doing. Yeah. And how else do you learn anything? How does a child learn how to walk? They fall down and they get back up, but they learn. They learn things, that, but that's the only way we can learn. So our so-called past failures taught us something. Truth. The only true way to avoid failure is not to try. <laughs> right? Yeah. That's, and this, and what I think when people stop trying, that is fear actually winning. So when you look at somebody like Bertrand Russell, he stated, Fear is the main source of superstition and one of the main sources of cruelty. To conquer fear is, to, is the beginning of wisdom, Bertrand Russell. So as we discussed yesterday, fear is a mixture of fear of failure, fear of success, fear of change, and fear of the unknown. That's really what fear is. And if you suffer from anxiety, worry, doubt, procrastination, if you're consistently skeptical, if you have panic and panic attacks and you're in a constant reaction mode, you are stuck in fear. You understand those, right? Yes. Yeah. So let's discuss steps to conquer fear. So number one step, define fear. Define it. Awareness is powerful. Define your fear. Answer the question, what are you really afraid of? How many people do that? Sit down and ask yourself, what are you afraid of? Or do you have a fear of failure? Why do you have a fear of failure? What is it? Do you have a fear of success? Really be honest with yourself. Do you fight change? Are you one of those people that are always in the want to control trying to fight change? Do you try to control everything? So the first thing we have to do is, Define what fear is. Everybody goes, well, that scares me, or I can't do that. The moment you say can't and you're in apathy, remember, wow. we always enter the red zone through the fear energy. Mm -hmm. So fear is your base. It's the base of, of the red zone. So you understand the first thing, right? We have to define it. Yeah. People have all these stories in their head. They don't even know they're in their stories. Why are you afraid to do this? Why are you procrastinating? So that's number one, define fear. Number two, understand fear. It's important to become aware of what activates your fear programs. This is part of the awareness you always talk about. You have to see what's activating you. Is success activating you? Because I know it does me all the time. I know when we have things coming in and new things coming in, new things in, I always get uncomfortable every single time. But I know I'm going to get uncomfortable. So I have new clients, I get uncomfortable. New projects, I get uncomfortable. New, always. I don't know, do you have anything? How would you say, what is, when you, when you talk about what activates your fear programs? What activates it? Yeah. Just, just like you said, when, when the new things, I think things that I, it's the unknown, obviously, you know? Um, but I think it's knowing that I can succeed, right? but knowing that others may not. So it's, it's the convincing of other people that my ego tries to talk to me. It's like, well, you know, you can do it, but they don't. And it's right. kind of like trying to prove other people, but when I should really do it for me, that's one thing I battle all the time. And it's like, oh, I'm going to make them look bad or I'm going to make whatever the surrounding is instead of doing it for me. Nelson always gets in my ear with that when I have to stop and think. So we talked yesterday, we talked on uh, uh, the science of fear. You have to understand fear, but this is a little bit different. You need to understand your fears, mm -hmm. you know? And, and so what, what, what are the things that activate fear? And how does, ask yourself this question, how does fear affect your day? Go through your day. How did fear affect my day today? If you're procrastinating, you're in fear. If you're worried about something, you're in fear. If you doubt something, you're in fear. Obviously, if you're in panic attack and terrified, you know you're in fear, right? But how did it affect your day? And what did you feel during the day? And what 
fear energies were activated. Again, download those energies. Go, when you're in the, stress, in the stress mastery community, it's right in the, the courses. You go to resources, and it's the energies. And you want to keep a copy of these energies with you all day long. Put them in, and you want a couple of them because you want to know what was activated. Because there's a, the, the, the sneaky fear energies are the ones that don't really upset you. Yeah. Like, those are the ones that people don't realize. Those are the energies. They're not, they're sneaky. They're doubt or skeptical or worry, a little worry. I'm worried about this. You just say it. And it's sometimes, you understand, it's a habit. Mm -hmm. It's a habit, people. It's a program. It's a habit. So number two is understand the fear. Number three is connect to your gut. So when fear is activated, the ego is talking. The ego, you're, if you're activated, you're stuck in fear, you're streaming a program. It's creating a construct through stories. Now, when you see this and practice the let go technique, you can connect to your heart, which connects you to the gut brain. This is where your intuition resides. What is your gut saying about this situation that is keeping you afraid? So let's say, and the only way you can do that, people, is to pause plan. You have to pause plan, and you have to relax, and you have to become very present. But when you connect your gut, your intuition will tell you, uh, I wouldn't go this way. This is not a good idea. Or yes, we should proceed. If you don't learn how to connect to your gut, Sometimes that fear is real. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is, even though it's imagined, right? It's telling you this is not a good thing for you to do right now. But yeah. how do you know that? Only way you can know that is by connecting to yourself. You agree? Yeah. Um, I, 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 I talked about that on Monday. I said where you, you know that you're, you're working with the fear and not against it when you're connecting to yourself, your higher self, and not connecting to your ego. Because I, I found that the, the biggest fears that I always let uh, get in the way of things are the ones that I could justify. Yeah. So not the irrational well, ones where I'm like, oh, yeah. it's the ones I'm like, no, everybody should be afraid of this. Or no, it's, yeah. nobody would blame me if I didn't do this. Those are the ones that are dangerous because when they're justified, you yep. feel like it's okay. The ego is a justifier. Mm -hmm. The ego will always try to justify it. So that's number three. You'll want to kind of connect to their gut. And that's everything we talk about in Stress Mastery. Number four, contextualize the fear. How, ask this question, how is the fear affecting your ability to achieve your goal? How is this fear affecting your happiness in your life, your sense of well-being? Is this fear a barrier to your growth? And answer honestly. That's how you really look at a fear. How is it affecting you? By not taking action. What is it doing for you? By, by running or reacting or by blaming or by being in a poor me and going in apathy, how is that affecting you? And if you're honest, that alone will start to break up the fear. You're just trying to be, because you're connecting to yourself and being honest. Yeah. Number five, simple question. Is the fear real? Is it real? Ask the question, is what you're feeling real? Are you asking, ask yourself this, are you asking paralyzing questions? Are you afraid of, uh, of being embarrassed? Are you afraid of losing something that you've got? Are you afraid of what? That's what you gotta ask your question. Is it real? Is this a real fear? And if you ask this question and it comes back yes, and you're really present, that would be you connecting to your gut. Yeah. Your intuition telling you, yeah, you don't want to go this way. This is going to end badly. This is mm -hmm. not good for your higher path. This is not connected to your purpose. But there's so few people that ever connect to that. But everybody can. It's the pause plan that we talked about. It's connecting to the green zone. So number six is if you want to conquer fear, you have to take fear head on. Once you determine that the fear is holding you back, You've done the questions, right? And it's time to just do it. Take action. Be uncomfortable. Set a plan. Set goals. Use the higher goal setting lesson from module three in the stress mastery community. It's lesson three or four, Dave. I don't remember which one it is. Do you? The, higher goal, the, the higher goal setting? 
That was uh, the. Th- it's three. in module three, but is it lesson three? Yeah, I believe it's. Yeah, it's lesson three. Lesson three. So when you go to lesson three, it's really simple. This is one of the most amazing lessons that we have in a community because it's an absolute course in itself because you just have to follow the lesson in order and do the work in order and it will actually lead you to the action steps that will move you immediately through fear. Well, think about how that lesson is set up. It's set up to get you clarity. It's set up to get, but it, at the end, what does it do? It takes you right through fear. It takes you yeah, through. it walks you through. Oh, you've got to, number six is you've got to take fear head on. And then number seven, we've talked about this. You've got to connect to the heart. When you connect to the heart, using the stress mastery steps, the seven steps, you connect to the higher self. That's what David talked about on Monday. What does this do for you? This connects you to the spiritual energy. So now you're connected. In the head, you have clarity and you can put a plan together. In the heart, you have imagination and you have your gut connected. And then the hand is taking action with integrity. This is important because the only way you're going to conquer fear is to go through fear. There's Mm -hmm. no other way of doing it. And you need to be connected to do that. You don't want to go through fear through force because you're not doing anything to get rid of what caused the fear. You want to go through fear through, through the green zone. So the only way you could do that is connection. So number eight, and I think this is important, Dave. If you're working on conquering fear, you have to learn this one lesson. Ask for help. Why can't people ask for help? Overcoming fear is about focus, right? Seeing fear and taking action. And many of us do not take action because we have a fear of asking for help. Ask somebody that knows how to do it. And yes, asking for help is a fear. It's a fear of being embarrassed, not knowing something, especially in today's world. In today's world, we think we have to know everything. Oh, I'm going to Google it. (laughs) And Google, what if Google doesn't have the right answer for you, Mm -hmm. right? So I I found, what are your your thoughts on that? I, I believe in seeking out experts in the area you're pursuing. Um, what are your thoughts? I think when you try to, when you, when you try to pretend to know everything, so you don't look bad, like the fear of not knowing something, it's, it, you, you miss out on a lot of the learning that you get when you don't know it. I mean, the amount of things that I've learned because of fear, because I was like, oh man, I don't know how to do this. So I should figure out how to do this and do this and do this. And it wasn't me like being scared of doing something. It was me kind of building up my tools to overcome that fear. And if I pretend, you know, like I knew it, I wouldn't have gone through all these different paths to learn all these tools and stuff like that. And now those fears are like, I I laugh at it. I'm like, wow, I was really, you know, worried about that. Well, that fake it till you make it thing just destroys Mm -hmm. people. It really is. That's why like Amy Cuddy, if you guys really want to watch a good TED talk, it's Amy Cuddy. You know, uh, it's not fake it until you make it. It's fake it until you become it. It's yeah, always her a really posture big presence. Uh, yes, to- her posture presence. She talks about that. It's amazing what she teaches. But when you're talking about, you know, the, the fear of asking for help, this is where the community, join a community that can help and support you. Research and don't become, but don't become paralyzed in research, but mm-hmm. research things. And remember, knowledge doesn't change anything. Knowledge gives you the ability to act. The only way you're going to know and overcome fear is to do it. But asking for help will overcome fear because you will have somebody who can guide you and keep you accountable as you go through the action. You know, you can have all the coaching in the world, but if you're not going to do anything, it doesn't matter. You're not going to conquer fear. Mm -hmm. But when you're embarrassed to ask for help and like you said you pretend that you know everything well then you're just that is that is that that is being stupid that's really being stupid is when you act like you know everything yeah what would you that's that's, arrogance right there yeah that's right that's dumb you know and number nine conquering fear you got to educate yourself fears are based on past experiences They're based on personal experiences. They can come from childhood trauma or abuse, or they can be developed through some type of tragedy that happened to you. Now, 
Other fears are programmed as a result of the tribalization process from culture, religion, society, and these all create fear programs. You have to educate yourself on what fear is. And these are some of the things that you must get knowledge on so you can conquer fear. One, the fear response, the stress response. Educate yourself. Two, the tribalization process. How are we programmed? Three, the comfort zone energies. Look at those energies and how the comfort zone works and how the snapback works. Um, four, the survival process of focus. How human beings are wired to focus and we get what we aim for. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Number six, stress loop. You've got to understand the loop and how it works. We talked about that on Tuesday. And then finally, you really have to have to uh, incorporate the practice of stress mastery in the steps because those steps are practices it, it's not that the, the the seven steps of stress mastery is not about you do one step and now you can go to the second step now you can go third step it doesn't work like that because if you go first step second step third step fourth step and forget the first step guess what you are then caught in the negative energies and fear is the energy that protects the stress energies the level one energies, the red zone energies. So you've got to educate yourself. And I just gave you a list of things you want to learn. You could come into the Stress Mastery community. All those modules are already up. Everything is in there. Everybody in there understands these things. These are the things that you have to educate yourself on because most of the time, we don't even know why what we do what we do. If you don't know why you do what you do, well, then you're just going to keep on doing what you do. And then number 10, to conquer fear, you have to create a long-term vision. You agree? Oh, yeah. You have to have the, you have to use, I think it's so important to use the superpower of the heart, imagination. You, so if we look at that, number one, you got to get clear of what you want. Number two, you got to write that out in detail. Number three, you got to learn how to practice visualization, both morning and night. And number four, Amy Cuddy, walk it, talk it, and be it. Put yourself in that successful energy because fear can't live in the higher energies. Always remember that. So focus and action are really the true tools of transforming fear into courage. So we look at focus. Focus is allowing the fear. And that means that we drop the definitions of this is bad or this is a problem or, you know, and then, so we have focus. Then action is the second part. You've got to act despite the fear going through the discomfort and facing the resistance head on. It's this combination that creates consciousness. When you become conscious, you are really then in control. It's not the want of control. You are in control. You are present. You are in the now and you are conquering fear. So David, to close this episode, we see many business leaders and this is something I wanted, I'm glad that we redid this because I wanted your opinion on this. So we see a lot of business leaders, motivational speakers, coaches, coaches, entrepreneurs, you know, all these guys. And they have, we, YouTube is millions of YouTubes now, right? You can just, people live on those. And you see, they pretend that they are incredibly controlled. They're stoic and they're confident, right? And they give off the perception that they don't feel fear. They give off this thing like, ah, you know, be like me. I don't feel fear. And here's the truth. Everyone feels fear. No one becomes a true success without dealing with fear. No one escapes this. The question is not if you're going to feel fear. You will. But are you reacting in fear or are you responding in fear? Both of those are actions. When we react in fear, we procrastinate. Procrastination is an action. When we respond in fear, we're moving forward. It's an action. When we react in fear, it kills opportunities, relationships, businesses, finances, and it will even kill our health. As humans, we focus on only one thing at a time. So think about this, David. You can either focus on fear or you can be in the now. Action depends on our focus. I would say the type of action depends on our focus. Becoming conscious is knowing this. So 
do you agree that there's a lot of people out there teaching things that really it's just not true. You're not going to get anywhere without facing fear because you can't escape it. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, yeah, I think people, and, and I'm starting to kind of harp on this with awareness a little bit more often, but the pendulum is becoming more, um, apparent to me and a bigger tool for me to explain to a lot of people, um, especially clients that are just starting is that it's, it's literally the opposite. It's, it's, what do you want to accomplish? Here's the fear that, you know, presents itself when you want to do that. Is it worth it to you? And if it isn't, if it's something that you're not, I do not want to go through, then it's not something that you're really, you know, connected to. And maybe you should, you should skip it. You know, there's yeah. times where you don't need to do things that you're, you, everything isn't for everyone. And if you're yep. doing something because someone else did it and you're worried about doing it, you're not connected, you're not willing to go through that fear. It's okay. Maybe you don't have to go through it, but you don't deserve the end result if you're not willing to go through the fear. I totally agree with you. So that'll end this episode. We'll get this episode out today. We are, we apologize for our uh, technical difficulties and we hope it wasn't inconvenient for anyone. That's it for today's show. Our mission here is to create a shift in the planet. You can join us on this mission by simply like, share, and subscribe. Those links are right below the show. As always, until next time, stay inspired.